Okay, this is the Olympic and Powerlifting Program Phase 2, Session 1. So I'm assuming that you've already done Session 1, you've watched all those videos and seen the explanations. Um, if you haven't, that's where you want to start. And actually you want to start at the intro video because in the intro video I'll explain how the sets and reps are written up on the sheet and you'll want to refer to the sheet for sets and reps. Here I'm just going to talk about the exercise demonstrations. And uh, we're going to start our warm up with a hands down bridge. So I'll come onto my mat, have my hands down behind my hips, hips down to start, heels down, and then I'll shoot my hips up, let my head go back, and uh, yeah, try to extend the hip, let the head relax back, and getting a great opener for my, for my chest and uh, activation for my hips. The next one I'll do are some uh, diagonal pull-aparts where I'm going to take my band, okay, and I want to find the right level of resistance, so I'll have my hands pulled apart like this, and then I'm going to keep my shoulders square, but I'm going to pull the band across, so one arm is down low and the other arm is overhead, and I'll uh, just pull it across my chest there, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Don't let your shoulders uh, turn when you do that one. And then we've got some one-leg toe touches, also known as a one-legged deadlift. And actually, if you aren't able to keep your posture well going down to touch your toe, I only well, I only want you to go as far as you can while keeping uh, while keeping your posture. And what I mean by that is that you can keep uh, a straight line from heel all the way to head, pretty much a straight line. And you'll do uh, repetitions of this. And so if I if I went to go touch my toe, I would probably lose my posture a little bit. So I Personally, I only go down just to the middle of my shin, and that's usually where you're going to be lifting from. That's about the furthest mobility that you're going to need in this way when you are doing your Olympic lifting and your power lifting. So uh, do both sides there, and then the last warm-up one will be a walking knee tuck stretch. So I'm just going to lift one knee up, tuck it out, tuck it up, and then walk it out. Take a couple steps in between each pull, holding briefly. And just notice that when I bring my leg up, I don't want to round my back to bring my knee to my chest. I want to stay tall and stay strong through the down leg. So I'm really stretching out my glute and my hip flexor. <clears throat> okay, we're going on to the strength exercises next. And we're going to start with our power cleans. So we did uh, hang power cleans in the first session uh, where you pull it from above your knee. Well, now we're going to pull the bar from ground to shoulders um, in the same fashion. So really the first thing you really prerequisite on this one is that you need to have established the rack position. So we'll talk about that first and where I want the bar to be on my shoulders here. I flip it around and I want to be able to catch it on my shoulders every time. So I have to squeeze my shoulder blades, or squeeze my elbows in, and I'm gonna feel a stretch behind my shoulder blades, but the weight is resting on my shoulders, not just on my arm, but on my shoulders. So you see how I can get it on my shoulders by flipping the elbows through a little bit and keeping them in, okay? So I have to be able to go from there. And I'll also, I'll actually start from the top and work my way down on this movement. So you saw how I lifted it from here and then I dropped underneath it. Well, let's talk about that drop. At the highest point in your pull, you're gonna be, this is gonna be your positioning. Hip is extended, shoulders are pulling back, arms are gonna start to pull the bar up a little bit and the momentum will be carrying the bar upward and keeping it close to the body. Now from here, I want to drop underneath the bar a little bit. So I'm going to bend my knees, my hips, my shoulder will come forward. I have to simultaneously flip through to catch it on the shoulder and I make heel contact. So I'm gonna be from here to here, getting the heels down. I can't catch on my toes because I'll lose the weight forward. I have to get back to my heels, get the hips back, let the shoulders come forward a little bit, okay? Now, working on the pull, and um, this is the first time that we've been working on a clean pull. Uh, yeah, I was going to stick around for a little bit and try to film some of these. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, like, any ideas? 
Um, I was hoping to get like a, yeah, like 45 minutes or so. Okay. Are you going to be around too? I am. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just curious what time you're heading out. Oh, okay. Cool. Thanks. No problem. So this is the first time we're going to be doing a clean pull as well. So similar to your deadlift on your setup, except for now we're going to shift your weight down a little bit. So your hip, hips go back a little bit and shoulders uh, also come back a little bit. And this will be not quite as strong of a position as a regular deadlift if I'm just looking to lift it to my hip. But now since I'm looking also to have that coordinated movement where I drop underneath it, I'm gonna sacrifice a little bit of strength so that I can have more of an upright body angle and that I don't have to have so much change in my body angle. In fact, my, my torso positioning here will be similar to what it will be when I catch the weight here. All right, so generally you're gonna have your feet underneath your hips. You're gonna have a slight angle of your feet outward. You can see from here, a slight angle outward. The heels are gonna be pressing down into the ground the whole time during the pull, except for at the very last moment when I'm gonna be up in the air. But until this point, even you know, here, 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 all the way to here, I'm gonna have the heels down and then I start to come up onto the ball of the foot. Place the hands so they're wide enough outside of your feet so that you don't have to crunch your knees in like this. And then hook grip. You can practice your hook grip here. Wrap your thumb around the bar and then wrap your middle finger around your thumb. And now notice there's gonna be parts to the pull. The first is the setup and make sure you're setting tight. Shoulders down, hips are loaded, eyes are looking a little bit in front of you. And then the first part of the pull, I won't notice that until I get the bar to my knee, my torso angle pretty much stays the same. Once I get it to the knee, the second part of the pull, I guess maybe the third part of the pull, is to sweep the bar into the hips. So I'm gonna actively pull the weight into my hips here so that when I'm here, I have potential to spring through and that's the third part of the pull. A common fault is for people to come here and extend their knees their, their knees are already extended by the time the bar gets into the hips and then they kind of hip check the bar and it flings out underneath them and you just don't have as much you're not going to be able to get as much momentum there but if you're pulling from here you're going to be able to get a lot more drive and a lot more leverage so then the the challenge is to link all those parts together so the first part of the pull can be nice and slow but once it gets past the knee it's going to happen boom 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 okay so first pull Second pull, third pull, drop catch, stand it up. See how I return the bar from the rack to my hips. I need to kind of catch it into my hips, sink into the hips, just so I can safely bring it down. Set the weight down in between reps. First pull, second pull, third pull, drop, catch, stand up, and repeat that motion. Good, that's your power clean. Next, we got uh, snatch balance. So you would want to take this one from the rack if you could, like have your barbell up on the rack, and you know you might start with just the PVC pipe, or you might work your way up to uh, a regular bar and take it off the rack though. So I get it off of my rack and I step myself up. I'm gonna start with my feet pretty close together, and I'm gonna have my hands probably double shoulder width or in your snatch width grip. Make sure to set your elbows up so that they're underneath the bar, and then tighten up. So kind of pull the bar down on your back, brace your abdominals, flex your legs at the top of this motion. And now what I'm basically gonna be doing is dropping underneath the bar, dropping myself into a squat while pressing the bar straight overhead, and then standing back tall. So notice a couple things here. On this one, watch my feet. They'll come out a little bit wider into my squat position. And, uh, and my heels make contact with the ground when I catch. Okay, and then I'm going in straight down into a squat and you were working your overhead squats already in uh, phase one, so this will be a little bit tricky to coordinate, but you should have already established your ability just to go down into an overhead squat before doing this drill. And then notice as I'm dropping, I'm going to press the weight and I want to stabilize it so that my the bar is directly over my shoulders here. Don't let it fall forward. Try to keep it directly overhead there. And uh, 
good drill to build up to doing full squat snatches. Okay, the next one I'm gonna do is a bent dumbbell row. So grab a pair of dumbbells. You can probably do a pretty good amount of weight on this exercise. And uh, you're gonna start with your feet together. You're gonna hinge at the hip and lean pretty far forward. It's almost like you're in your powerlifting deadlift position. And then from there, brace your abdominals, shoulders back, and just pull the weight along the line of your legs, right outside of your legs. You notice I'm not rounding and flaring my shoulders, not shrugging. I gotta keep a tight arch and uh, pull the arms back, pull the elbows back. Front rack marches next. And here's where I'm basically gonna load up the bar um, probably a little bit more than I would for a set of front squats. And the idea here is to just get used to holding on to a good amount of weight in your front rack position. So I would have to take the weight off of a, a weight rack. So take it off of a weight rack, establish your, um, and take it off, get your, um, get your rack position established here. And then if you had space to go, it's great if you can just walk with this exercise. But if you just have a weight rack and you're in a regular gym, you don't have that much space, that's okay. What you can do instead is just march in place. Take it off the rack and then march it in place. Bring your knees up almost to your hips. And it's just a way to get used to uh, having heavier weight on the bar. <clears throat> okay, uh, next we've got some diagonal med ball chops. So I'm gonna take a medicine ball and I'm gonna do a chopping motion with the ball. Now, I don't have a great place to do it in this room. What I would ideally want to do is set up next to a wall, okay? And I'm gonna start with the ball over my head on one side, and then I'm gonna slam it down. I'm actually gonna drop it into the ground so that it hits the ground. And the, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hit it off of the ground. It will then bounce off of the wall, and then I want it to bounce right back to me. And then I just repeat that um, I repeat that. If you don't have a wall, you can do the same motion, you just don't let go of the ball. So start with it overhead with a wide base, and then I'm gonna make that slamming motion down and lift it right back up. Slam it down and lift it right back up. And it's a little bit, in some ways, it's a more active exercise because you're active on both ends. So either of those work for the mid ball chops. Payloff walks are next. So on a payloff walk, I set up a band, wrap it around, um, around belly button height, I'll turn, take a quarter turn away from the point of attachment. I'm going to extend the weight out right from my midline. And then as I'm going to, I'm going to take a step out, together, back, together. And this weight is really trying to pull me back toward the wall, but I'm trying to keep it in my midline, uh, extended from my midline. So I have to stay strong with my core and work extra hard with my hips in order to do that motion. That's a payoff walk. Do both sides on that. Next one, I got a front to side plank. So I'm gonna be, um, yep, I'm gonna be in a front plank first, nice and straight, and then I'll step over into a side plank, back to a front plank, and then to the other side with the side plank. Notice that I'm stepping the foot across my body, tapping it down, establishing the positioning in a side plank, and then coming back around. Okay, and then the last one for today, for session one, is a resisted, is resisted walking. Now, if you happen to have a, at your gym one of those sleds that are made for this where you push the sled, that's a great option. And there's a number of ways to do this. There's also, you can do tires for resistance. You can also have a partner and you wear a band and he, holds, he or she holds onto it and then you, you march with a little bit of resistance. Um, but one option that I kind of makeshift thing that I can use here is I have a piece of carpet and I just put a plate on the carpet and I just push the plate if I'm on a slidey surface, if I'm on something like this hardwood, I can do that and that's a, that will work you in the same way. Okay, so that's it for session two, uh, uh, session one, phase two, um, as far as the strength goes, there's also the cardio. I talk about the cardio exercises in another video.